Working with clay can be therapeutic. It's connecting with the earth. It's a great pastime for a person who wants to clear their head, relax, and make something useful. So today I'm gonna to be showing how you can hand build pottery at home using just your hands and some simple tools. Let me show you how you can make pottery at home without having to invest in a bunch of fancy, expensive equipment. Today I'm making a mug, which is not only just a simple form to make, but also one that almost everybody can use in their house. So the kind of hand building I'm doing here today is coil. There's several different types of hand building. There's slab and pinch, but coil's good for building just about every shape you can imagine. So to get started, I just use my hand and steady pressure on the work surface to roll out a nice thin coil of clay. And then I just place it on top of that base I cut out. And then using a firm downward motion, I do what I call a bonding pinch to connect the coil to that base that I cut out. So now I'm just coming around and pinching that coil thinner. So my desired thickness for the walls of my mug are about a quarter inch. Once I get those pinched to the desired thickness, I'm gonna use a wet finger to smooth the bottom of the mug. This is a good time to do that because once I add another coil or so, it's gonna be really hard to get in there and work. So here I am rolling out another coil and then repeating the process, put the coil on top of the pot, use that bonding pinch with firm downward pressure to connect the coil to the base of the pot. And then once that's all connected, come around and pinch that coil thinner and upward once I've reached my desired thinness, now I can start scraping the pot. So in this case, I'm using an old store gift card. So I'm just dipping the card in water and getting it wet and then using nice vertical strokes upward and using my hand on the inside to keep from pushing it out of shape. And doing this repeatedly, I'll form a nice smooth, even cylinder. Once I'm done smoothing the outside, I'll come back with that damp gift card and scrape the inside of the pot as well. And now I'm ready to add another coil. So again, the same procedure, roll out a coil, place it on top of the base, use that bonding pinch to connect the coil to the body of the pot, pinch the coil thinner. Once the coil is all pinched up to the desired thickness, use that damp gift card to scrape the outside and make it a nice even cylinder. So now I've built it a little higher than I need for a mug. It's really the right size for like a tankard. So I'm gonna trim it down. So I've braced my arm that's holding the knife and I'm rotating the mug against the firm knife to trim off the rim in an even location. And I'll just pop that off of there. And now I'm just getting that rim nice and wet and sloppy and using my fingers to just smooth it out. And once that rim's all smooth, I'll let this rest a little while and firm up before I come back and attach the handle. Now I'm ready to attach the handle. Now there's different ways of attaching handles, but the ancients in the American Southwest like to use what is called a rivet attachment. That is where the handle actually goes clear through the body of the pot and is smoothed out on the inside. This is the strongest possible way of attaching a handle to a pot. So the coil I'm rolling out here is actually gonna be my handle. So I'm flattening it out a little bit and then I'll cut a little notch in the end and I'll just press it right through that hole I cut and use my hand on the inside to smooth that off. And then the same on the top and then smooth that off on the inside and then use a little pieces of damp clay to just fill in that little gap where the handle meets the body. I'm using my gift card again to smooth off the inside. Okay, I've got the little mug all formed and now I just have to let it sit and rest a while and kind of firm up. Uh, once it's a little firmer, I can come back and start smoothing and polishing this. And then of course, we'll put a little paint on it before we fire it, okay? So I'll catch back up with you in a few hours after this has had time to firm up a little bit. This is the smoothing stage and you just need something smooth and rounded. In this case, I'm using the back of a spoon, but you can use all kinds of things, including smooth stones. Uh, but the back of the spoon works pretty good, and I'm, and I'm using it wet uh, because I'm not trying to polish. I'm just trying to smooth and take those little bits of grit that are in the clay and press those down in there so you have a nice smooth surface. And here I am using the handle of a screwdriver. 
because I needed something that was kind of long and had that hard rounded edge. So anything that's hard and smooth works good. Okay, it's the second day and this little mug has dried to the point that we call leather hard where it's not plastic anymore, it's rather firm, it's ready to be polished. So in this type of pottery, I'm not going to be using a glaze and that is because I want to do everything from home using simple tools. Glaze requires specialized equipment, it requires kilns, and so in this case, I'm going to polish the surface of the pot and then I'm going to paint on it with some white clay. So I'll have designs, this will fire to a reddish color and there'll be white designs on top of it. So possibly the hardest material for you to acquire in trying to make a mug like this is the white paint. In this case, I'm using a white clay. If you go to the store where you buy your clay and ask them, they may have some white clay that would be suitable for this. But if not, a white underglaze would also work. Anything that's going to fire hard on the surface of the pot that you can decorate with. On the other hand, it does not have to be decorated. The mug will be beautiful of its own merit. So today, I'm hoping to get this polished and painted and then let it dry for the rest of the day so that I can fire it tomorrow. So the polishing stage is a lot like the smoothing stage, except the pot is usually a little bit drier and I'm using that spoon dry. I'm not dipping it in water. And this gives it a nice smooth, glossy surface. So the pot's fully dry now, I'm ready to decorate it, and this is just some white clay that I've mixed up into a thin solution. These are just regular brushes that I buy at the hobby store. I'm decorating the pot with that creamy, thin clay slip. Now that I've got all the decorations painted on, I'm just going to preheat the mug in my oven to make sure I got all the moisture out before I fire it. Okay, I've got the mug all painted. It's been preheated in my oven and I'm ready to fire it. There are a million different ways you can fire pottery without a kiln. This is just one of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a link to a playlist of a lot of different methods of firing without a kiln. I'll put that right over here so you can check that out if you're interested in learning more about how to fire without a kiln. This particular type of firing uses just regular old bricks that I got at Home Depot and a bag of charcoal. And so you can do this real simply if you just have a little bit of space. It doesn't make a whole lot of smoke or flames. Uh, it gets the job done and it's pretty inexpensive. This method was developed by my friend Tony Sores. I'll put a link to his video about this in that same playlist. So I'm not gonna go into a lot of details about how this is done. I'm just gonna go ahead and get it fired and then we'll show how we can seal it and use it after that. So the bucket here is just protecting the mug from the fuel coming in contact with it and leaving dark spots. A firing like this usually takes about three or four hours, and that's just the amount of time it takes for all this coal to burn down to ash and the pot to be cool enough to touch. Now that I've got it all fired hard, I need to seal it because earthenware is by nature slightly porous. And so I'm gonna do that by boiling starch in it. In this case, oatmeal. So in cooking the oatmeal in here, those starches will get down into the pores of the earthenware and create a good seal so the liquids don't seep out. Okay, I think the mug came out really good. This is the point in the video where most of these hand-built pottery at home would end the video. But there's a reason I didn't use glaze. And that's because glaze is complicated. A glaze requires certain recipes. Glaze requires a kiln. And then because I didn't use glaze, it's gonna come up with a lot of questions about whether or not this type of pottery is usable. And so what I wanted to end this video with is showing you that an unglazed mug is quite usable. So 
moment of truth, I'm actually gonna pour coffee in it and some creamer and mix it up, and I'm gonna drink some of it, and I'm also gonna let it sit there a little while and make sure that it's not really seeping through. I wanna show that it's sealed fairly well. No seepage, nothing, as dry as can be. I think we got a pretty good seal with that oatmeal. And any kind of starch can be used that way. So I think in this video, I covered pretty well the subject of how to hand build pottery at home. I didn't use any ingredients that are difficult to find or to buy. And so you should be able to do this yourself at home easily. The only thing that might be hard for you to acquire is the clay. But if you live in a reasonably sized city, there's probably a ceramic store. And then you can also purchase clay online. I actually dig my own clay out in the desert and process it myself, which is also a lot of fun. In fact, I'm gonna put a video right over here which compares the process of buying clay in the store with going out and digging and processing your own clay. So you can get an idea of the pros and cons of each and maybe you'll like to go out and dig your own clay as well. Okay, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.